Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are basically going to look at how you can coordinate your hands on the piano or rather your fingers and or both um, specifically. Your um, hand independence will be trained by following a variety of what I call as time fields and your fingers will independently work together to play a very very simple melody which I'm sure you would have played at some time in your life learning the piano right so without any delay let's just get cracking with the exercise and as I teach you the notes we will get started and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel turn on that bell icon for regular reminders and notifications and share the video like the video and leave us a comment so for this exercise I'm going to use the metronome set at 90. This is how a metronome at 90 sounds. So let's just get used to that. One, two, three, four. And for the most part, we'll follow a four by four rendition. Three, four. It's pretty much it. Okay. So we're going to use that. We're going to bring that in and out of the lesson. Um, it's not mandatory that you practice with a metronome, but the metronome is just to show you the interaction of the two hands, okay, and to kind of perfect the beat. And a quick word of advice when using the metronome, it's always nice when you can feel the time within you. Once your body kind of is a clock on, on its own, you can then rely on the electronic clock or the electronic tool, uh, which is the metronome. So the metronome is always used to further perfect your rhythmic capabilities, right? But the actual rhythm sense needs to come from you. And um, having said that, the piano as an instrument is a very rhythmic instrument you could definitely compare it with any percussion instrument like a drum kit or a bongo or any such thing primarily because both your hands are independently working or can independently work for different requirements or different tasks so in a sense when you train yourself as a pianist as you excel forward you're trying to look at your right hand as a melodic instrument and your left hand as a bass instrument or your right hand and left hand as dual melodic instruments you know or one being harmonic in nature and one being uh, purely rhythmic in nature so if ever I were to compare the piano with anything even though by nature I guess it is a stringed instrument it's part of that family I would compare it more to a percussion instrument like a tabla or a, a, a drum kit basically okay so this exercise revolves around pretty much just five notes um, I was thinking of making it C, D, E, F, G but then you know how it is every YouTube piano video you'll ever find uh, will have these five, uh, five notes so I've kind of kept the key of C but I'm preferring that E flat whenever you go minor uh, as you watch from a lot of my lessons the minor really adds that emotion and just makes it sound musical instantly the major somehow in, in cases like this when you have five fingers playing these five you know, notes C D E F G kind of feels like a finger exercise so this is a finger exercise but when you go minor as you probably watched in that uh, intro video, it just sounds musical and it, you can use it, okay? So, uh, another important thing while watching this lesson is to get your keyboards out. You need to play along with me. Uh, if you don't have your keyboards with you or if you're not a keyboardist, you can still do this exercise with your two hands. So, maybe your left hand could hit the, the chest area. This gives you a nice bass thump. That sort of a vibe. And your right hand could hit the leg. So you're kind of simulating playing the piano, you know, two, three, four, or something sharper, something deeper. It's just my recommended places to hit the hand, but you can figure it out. You can even hit it on a desk or table or a book, whatever works for you, really. So you could practice this drill even without the piano, but I would highly recommend the piano while you learn the job. And uh, more importantly, try to watch this video till the end. If you have any doubts or any issues, pause the video, go back. Uh, YouTube also has a feature, a slowdown feature 
So use that. You can slow this down, I guess, to 75% of the original speed or even 50% of the or original speed and uh, learn better, I guess. Okay, so the job basically is to get this going with one of the hands. So you're basically trying to go up and down the first five notes of the scale. In this case, the C minor scale. So these are my fingers, C, D, E flat, F, G. Thumb, index, middle, ring, pinky. Let's see how it goes. Right? You could just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. That's pretty much it. You can try the same story in the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. Put it together. Also try to engage your voice. It will train your ear parallelly. So something like Something about the minor key just feels awesome. Right? Just sounds like music immediately. Just because that E became E flat. Okay, let's try this with the metronome just to give you an idea of playing it with the artificial or the electronic tool. Okay, as I said earlier, you want to set your metronome to 90 beats per minute. Okay, the app I'm using is called Pro Metronome, which is free for both Android and iOS devices. So you go with the pulse, with the click. So you want to hit every note on the metronome. So this is actually the preparatory stuff which you need to do for the exercise. Just play with the metronome. Okay. Okay, so that's basically the start. So I would like all of you to get that uh, before all the other chaotic stuff which is going to follow. So once you've got that uh, under the belt, so to speak, we can now start doing different hand combinations or finger patterns or finger interactions, whatever you want to call it. So the first thing I'd like to mention before I give you all this stuff, and it'll be really easy then, is how beats are generally structured. You have your main beats uh, with the click. So one, two, three, four. So this is a unit of time which is moving one, two, three, four. But being a unit of time, it's lasting a specific amount of time, isn't it? L let's say X amount of uh, milliseconds, right? Maybe 500 milliseconds, which is half a second or maybe quarter of a second or whatever. So as it goes faster and faster, you can feel the pulse. So that is the beat value. So what musicians start doing is, after you know the beat value, after you can feel the beat value, which is this one, right? What you can start doing is you then get into the beat. You then start going inside the beat by divisions of the beat, okay? So common practice for musicians would be to divide the beat by two, by three, as well as four. These are the units you could divide it by. I'm not saying you can't divide it by five and seven and whatever else. You could, but the common uh, practice for us musicians would be divide by two, divide by three, and divide by four. So if I go one, two, three, four, I'm not dividing at all. So if you want to divide by two, you can practice one and two and three and four and one and two. And so I'd request you to first actually say that before you even touch the keyboard three and four and one and two and three and four and one two and three okay then one and a two and a three and a four and a. now we are dividing the pulse by three so the beat we've gone inside the beat one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a back to division of two one and two and three and four and one and two and three and three one and a two and a three and a four and a right and a two and a three you can even divide by four which if you're a beginner student you can perhaps ignore it so it'll be one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a reason why i guess they choose these 
uh, syllables is to make it easy on the tongue while saying it in fast speeds, I guess. So, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and three. And each one has a different vibe. So, if you're perhaps stressing on the e's, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and one e and two e. It just the music changes, doesn't it? Or one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and two e. Very reggae. Four e and one e and two e and three. I'm doing nothing. I'm just making that sub beat louder. Us one e and two e and three e and four e and one e and tuck dun dun tuck dun dun. Right. This to me sounds very uh, Indian folk. Maybe like a Rajasthani or a Gujarati kind of rhythm. Dun 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 dun. Right, so when it depends on how you enunciate the division. So when you divide the beat, you can accent, you can sort of uh, subdivide, uh, and then you know remove and not play all the beats. You can also do things like dotted notes. You can also do things like triplets, and then do s slower triplets, faster triplets. So there's a lot of stuff lined up in this lesson. The first thing we'll do, of course, is take the same drill and double it. So you go feel the metronome. So doubling meaning eighth notes dividing by two, two units. So you go. You can even count one and two and three and four and one and in comparison, that's the original pulse. You can even do it with two hands. Do the pulse. Now let's double that pulse. Now the fun of this exercise is one hand will hold its ground. The left hand, for instance, it could be either hand. Left hand will go pulse. Okay, basically, sa re ga ma pa ma the same melody. Sa re ga ma. While the other hand is going to say to itself, "Let me divide the beat by two." So that's going to be da 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 da. So sa re ga ma pa ma ga re sa re ga. So that's what you try here. Instantly, the music also sounds very interesting. All of a sudden, right? Because the notes are harmonizing with each other in very different ways. It's also a nice practice to sing each hand. Right hand. Left hand. Little tricky, right? So again to recap, pulse divide by two together. Put in some emotion, dynamics. Remember, you have to make it musical. Following the metronome, as I mentioned, set at ninety beats per minute. Play it with feeling, and you could also. I mean, if you're having an issue getting the hands together, perhaps you could take the slower of the two hands, which in this case is what the left, right, and knock off the entire melody. Don't play all the notes. You can just start with one note. Okay, simplify that, and then. Double the right. Maybe if you could play like a little chord, move that chord. Once you've got that integration going, you can then play the melody.
okay so that's basically about dividing by 2 so the beat got divided by 2 now what musicians do very often when we divide by 2 we can play either straight which is going to be what i showed you earlier we call that straight you also have a swing variant which sounds something like this you kind of make the and go a little later actually in a triplet vibe uh, more on that maybe in another lesson but this is the swing feel and what jazz and blues musicians do is they will stress on that and a bit more than the main one that's the articulation giving you that swing feeling sort of a sense of moving sideways as opposed to front you know there we go now swing version straightened you rarely will combine straight and swing just to give you an idea swing that's a swing feel okay so division of uh, division by 2 straight as well as swing the other variety for you will be division by 3 so what happens there the left hand is going to probably hold its ground or the right hand will hold its ground when i say hold its ground i mean play the pulse so back to the that one and the other hand divides by 3 so first get the feeling of three division what will that be da ba da 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 da ba i'm just mumbling something but usually people will add something like one and a two and a three and a right or tak it tak it tak it tak it tak it if you are a carnatic musician or studying konakol tak it tak it tak it so right hand now has to do that tag da 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 right but you'll have to play the same melody in the ascending and descending direction so that will be you know right so these are triplets in the right hand isn't it right just to show you now the challenge with this exercise is the notes don't really um, you know meet up they take a while to actually resolve if to show you now the cycle kind of sort of resets itself or re recycles itself why did that happen well it's just the maths behind the uh, exercise right there is i am telling myself that i should not go you know in normal triplets that's how you would hear it normally right instead look at my fingers my fingers are happily just going up and down i'm not changing the motion of my fingers in this entire exercise there's no nothing much is going to change it's just we are just playing it up and down in triplets and that with respect to this that three notes for everyone now three for everyone always and look at the order it's going as per the sa re ga ma pa ma ga re principle all sorts of independent things like what if the left hand can do staccato while this is happening now that will start getting a bit a, 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 a lot more uh, movie theme like you know it's almost as though this is a different instrument and that's the point of independence you want to make both your hands do completely different things and serve different requirements or roles in the music piece or the uh, in the song which you're trying to work on so 
staccato left hand playing the pulse and triplet right hand officially we call these as eighth note triplets let's try that with a click oh little slower so always get to your pulse imagine the uh, triplet thing so dag da 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 triplet sound beautiful you need dynamics before you get dynamics you need a lot of control and a lot of practice it's the dynamics which ultimately tells the story after a while it's almost as though you are not in control of the piano the piano is just doing its own thing your fingers have just taken up a job of their own they have a mind of their own so you need to practice right right it's going to take you some time so the same process uh, uh, now the left hand will do the faster triplet stuff and the right hand will do the uh, pulse so let's figure that out let's only do left like i said earlier if you are uncomfortable doing the entire melodies of both hands just keep a single one this applies to me as well when i practice so relax focus on the music that was triplet left hand and uh, pulse right hand so the final uh, the final thing i want to mention in this part of a two part series the second part we are going to go even more crazy um, will be division of 4 so dividing by 4 conceptually is just double of dividing by 2 it's just going to test your fingers a bit more and improve maybe the control over your fingers because you're playing faster with a click so you may should not run away especially weaker fingers like the ring and the pinky you know it tends to run away so you may go you the slipping you know tends to happen so in that regard it's good to practice dividing by 4 but if you're newer to the instrument perhaps you could just stick with 2 and 3 for now let me demonstrate 4 and then we're done with part 1 so 1e e and a 2e e and a 3e and a 4e e and a 1e e and a 2e e and a now now okay slightly faster right compared to divide by 2 so again do this with the left hand pulse c now the same melody in the left hand while the right hand has to do some emotion if you want to like get your fingers acquainted with the new speed maybe you can just do simple root notes in the bass you know still sounds good then Staccato. Okay, and then of course we have to flip the hand. So left hand has to do the one E and sixteenth notes. So first get the right hand and left hand used to each other. Then. I 
I'm demonstrating on 90. If it's too fast for you, go slower. Maybe you can do 80. Let's try 80. Something like this. It's good work. Even slower, up to you. Right guys, so in this part, in, con in conclusion, we have basically taken the same drill. We've done it in different speeds in both of our hands. In uh, the first titration, we looked at dividing by two, straightened version as well as the swung version, where one hand is double of the other and or vice versa. In the second option, we looked at triplets. So there, it's rather tricky because the exercise takes very long to recycle. So you need to practice it a bit harder. Triplets again, 3x the speed in one hand versus 1x in the other hand. And last but not least, if you can, we do semi quavers, which is uh, dividing by four in one hand and uh, single uh, pulse in the other hand. But the job or the point of this exercise is to bring about finger independence, where the two hands are essentially playing two different melodies as the speeds change okay in the next part we are going to start looking at a couple more interesting topics when it comes to rhythmic practice we are going to look at dotted note uh, creation we are also going to look at triplets okay and accents so three more things to come so practice this one hard and make sure to head over to part two and if you're watching a video on our channel for the first time or if you haven't subscribed make sure to subscribe otherwise you're not going to get these notifications there are so many videos on our channel so it's very important that you hit the subscribe button, right? And um, you can also get the notes, support our channel, head over to Patreon. You can get notes of this lesson as well as all of our other stuff uh, in, the pre in the past and now present and definitely in the future. That's what Patreon is for, for all the notes. And if you consider yourself a beginner musician or a beginner student, we have a structured foundation piano course which is there on youtube as a playlist check out the description it'll be right there head over there that'll give you ongoing lessons which are very structured as i said so it starts off from the very beginning of rhythm harmony and melody right again thanks for watching this is jason here from nathaniel school and i will see you in the next one